Hey, what's going on? This is Ryan from the band State Champs, and you're watching Antihero Online. Uh, so first thing, Vans World Tour 2018, this is the last year of the cross-country run. How are you guys kind of holding up on the road this year? Well, we're doing all right. I mean, it's coming, coming down to the end here. Uh, we're in the midst of a 20-day stretch with no day off, so I think a lot of us are kind of really itching for that, that day off, which is, you know, it's in reach now. Uh, but it's been an incredible tour, and it's, it, people are coming out for us and, and uh, really, really showing support, and it's been a good time. And one of the things that I've been talking to with a lot of the bands is the void that Warped Tour is going to leave behind. For a lot of bands, this is the first exposure that their fan base yeah. got to them. What type of void do you think that it's going to leave in our industry? I mean, I think, honestly, I think it's going to open up a lot of space for other cool things to happen. Maybe not like a massive warp Tour type festival, but, you know, I think big club tours are going to be in the future. I think, you know, because people aren't going to have this anymore, I think there are going to be, you know, two or three or four cool things a summer that people can still look forward to. Hey, you know, these five bands are coming through that maybe like warp Tour style bands, but they're going to just, just pack out huge clubs. Um, I think maybe... You know, festivals like Lollapalooza and Coachella and other other established things like that will open up the doors for some, you know, alternative artists like us. I think, you know, some bands are already doing that, but I think, uh, I don't know, you, you know, I guess we're just going to have to wait and see. And talking about that and talking about the tours as well, do you think that it's going to lead to a lot of package tours from the bands that you guys have made friends with over the years? I think so. I think so. I think Warp Tour really creates bonds with, with bands that are like, I really want to spend more time with, with these people. And also their band is great and, uh, you know, like they would look good on our tour. So, yeah, like I said, I think big, big package tours are going to come through in the summer and they're just going to like bust out, you know, mini amphitheaters or like just big clubs and, and uh you know, it's going to be Warp tour -y, but not this. Yeah. Yeah. And you said before we started rolling the camera is that you guys released an album right before Warp Tour yeah. started. Tell me a little bit about the record and where you guys were at musically with this new record. Sure. Uh, we put out a record, um, yeah, a week before the tour started. It's called Living Proof. It's our third LP. And uh, it's... Uh, it's our best record, I can definitely say that. <laughs> in my opinion, I think it's our best record. And it's got the highlights, I think, from the first record, which is very fast and, you know, kind of more, um, I don't want to say immature, but it's, uh, you know, it wasn't developed pop punk. You know, it was fun, and it was just no real thought put into it. It was kind of, uh, not, not, not in a bad way, no thought, but just... I think the second record kind of evolved a little bit from that. We, we upped the production value and uh, got better as songwriters. And then, the, and then the third record, it's just a mix of the best parts of both of those records. And uh, the response on the tour has been amazing. We've been playing four of those new songs. And uh, the fact that people are singing them as loud as the older songs, that's how you know it's kind of it's doing all right. And you talked about the best parts of the record. When you guys were going through and starting to work on the writing process and recording, what were the best parts of the old stuff that you wanted to incorporate? I mean, we definitely we didn't want to we didn't want to abandon like the uh, the pop punk side of pop. like we've always kind of leaned more to the pop side of pop punk. We didn't want to lose the punk side, so you know we wrote we we were like we got to write a fast song. We want to do, you know, we, we want some of those same elements that people maybe initially fell in love with the band. We don't want to let those go. Although I think a lot of people, when you start kind of up in the production value and everything sounds crystal clear and the songs get like bigger and more anthem people are like, you know, this is a, this is a pop song, blah, blah, blah. Like, so we didn't want to lose any of that. And uh, I think our fans were actually surprised that we kind of brought some of the elements from the first record back in because they thought we were goners i guess they're like no state champs is kind of like they're they're too big they're too cool to like remember this stuff and it's just not the case like we wrote that stuff because we love it yeah. you know and, and we've just developed as songwriters you can't write the same record over and over and over and have fun with it you know exactly. so we really wanted to write smart sophisticated songs but also dump in some of that stuff that you know from our beginnings and one of the things that's really important, especially nowadays in the industry, is pushing yourself and driving yourself to that next level. Yeah. Um, when you went into the studio, did you kind of feel the need to have to do that? 
I mean, when you're writing, it's never like it's never a conscious thought that like we have to write a hit or like this has to be the song, blah blah blah. Like sometimes it happens and you just know it when it happens. Yeah. Um, but I don't know. I, th- I think it was just we just wrote what was like on our hearts and on our minds. You know, like whatever came out came out, and I think. We've grown so much since we put out the first record in 2013 till now. And, uh, you know, you're conscious of, you know, this record has to be better than the last one. Mm. There is pressure there, but with this, t- with this time around, we had a lot more time to actually develop the songs and kind of spend a lot of time cutting the fat. And you, you know it works at this point, and you know it doesn't. So the fact that we had a lot of time to work on it was, was special. And with that amount of time, was there at any point you were like, all right, we need to stop wasting our time and get this thing out? Um, not really. I think, I think we all agreed that, like, we're not going to put it out until we feel confident, you know? And that was cool because I think with the first two records, it was really, you know, write 10 songs and then that's the record. You know, with this, with this, with this one, we probably wrote upwards of 20, 25 songs. 13 made the record but you know there was a bunch of stuff in there that just wasn't good enough you know the songs were okay and maybe like on the first two records if we wrote those songs they would make it but we're at a point in our career where we're just like it's got to be the best or it's not worth it you know so that was uh, pretty encouraging actually because we were all on the same page as far as this time is well spent you know crafting these songs that's awesome, man. Yeah. That's a great way to look at it. Yeah. And that's pretty much everything that I got for you. Is there oh. anything I didn't touch on that you would like to add? No, just uh, if you're watching this interview, go uh, go pick up the record. It's five bucks on iTunes right now. You can get it in Target. Um, yeah, it's everywhere. Living Proof. You can find it on Spotify, too. It's on Spotify. It's on all the streaming sites, of course. We're going to keep you guys up on uh, social media. We're on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, all that stuff. State Champs NY. Yeah.